guys, it's Tammy. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be sniffing my Bond number no. 9 perfume samples and there may be a little bit of ASMR involved here as I unwrap them. So stay tuned if you want to see my thoughts on my Bond number no. 9 samples. So we recently got back from vacation. We were in Florida and on my way driving down the 28 hours, I was thinking, where am I gonna go shop for perfumes? I wanna smell these niche brands. I'd gotten some tips from Veronica and some of her subscribers on where I could best go and smell all these niche brands that you hear about all the time. And come to find out, I guess, Neiman Marcus, Saks Fifth Avenue, Bloomingdale's, some places like that were the best places to go. So I found a place that had all of those stores in one place. And the first one I hit was Saks Fifth Avenue. And I'm telling you, I had a great time in there and I got to smell a lot of perfumes. I also went to Neiman Marcus and the brands that I got to see and the brands that I got to sniff, you guys, it was like perfume paradise for me. I was a little bit starstruck just by these counters with these niche brands that I only usually can get a sample of online. I've never seen them all lined up in person ever. So it was really fun for me and everyone was super nice and super helpful and friendly and it just worked very well so that I was at one counter and I was sniffing and they were spraying some perfumes for me and we were talking about perfumes and we'd go to the next counter and someone there would take over and I would talk to them for a while and they'd spray some samples for me. And all in all, it was a really nice experience. I do have to say it was overwhelming to smell that many perfumes at once, like in one afternoon. Uh, I would say probably two or three hours we were there. Took a break in the middle to go to lunch in the eatery. I got some teriyaki chicken. Um, but anyways, um, it was a lot for my nose, a lot for my head. And I felt a little bit too shy to like, I had my little, you know, cross body bag and I had my little pen. I felt a little shy to take out and like write the names on each of the perfume testers. Um, I have... <laughs> I did keep my testers. I have so many. Um, there's probably, I don't know. I probably sniffed 100 perfumes that day. There's not 100 here, but um, it was a lot to remember, a lot to take in. And basically what happened was there were probably three or four perfumes in the whole day that made me smile. And those were the ones that really like were something special. Like some of them I just smelled and I was like, okay, Oriana, I've never smelled this. I smelled it and I don't even remember what it smells like now. I think it was kind of sweet and pretty. I honestly don't remember what it smelled like and I had it on a card. I think I actually did write the name down on that one, maybe. It really was cool though to see all, like, to see all the Tiziana Terenzi ones, the Sea Stars collection. And there was one I didn't like, I think it was Talea. And all the other ones were just like, I liked them. And that's all I can tell you about them. But I will tell you which perfumes made that slow smile spread across my face. And the first one that did that was by Guerlain. And it was, uh, is it Masque Outre Blanc? I think it's called. And one of the reasons that that smile spread across my face is because I recognized the smell. Very soapy, very clean, very musky, very beautiful, very my style. I smiled partly because, yes, this is so my vibe but also because it reminded me exactly of a perfume I had purchased recently at Winners. And if you were in the States, which most of you guys are, it would be like TJ Maxx, um, Ross, Marshalls, that kind of store carries this little brand. You might have seen them before. This is called Pearl, and this is by the Element Edition collection or whatever. This is that exact scent, exact. Now, the Guerlain Musque Outre Blanc lasted forever and ever and ever on my hand. So out of all of the, like I would say probably 100, 200 perfumes that I sniffed that day, I chose four to spray on my skin. One here, one here, one here, one here. And the one that I, and one of the ones I chose was the Musque Outre Blanc. I really loved it. I knew I was going to like it, but I have it. I have it. And there's nothing wrong with having the Guerlain one. And there's also nothing wrong with having this one. I just watched uh, Coco Peb's video last night. She was comparing Vallea to, well, actually I used to call it Vallea, but she called it Vallea. So now I'm going to call it Vallea too. Um, she talked at the end of that video about how, like, there's nothing bad about having a cheaper perfume or even a dupe or anything. And I don't believe that this was meant to be a dupe of that. There are a lot of like musky, soapy, clean, fresh perfumes. But this is that exact, exact note profile to me. And so the other one that really sp spread a smile across my face, it just like, I'd smell it and I'd be like, 
this is pretty like I really like this was by bond number nine and that's one of the things that got me interested in remembering that I had all of these bond number nine samples there's 10 here and some of them that I sprayed that day I don't remember anything about what they smelled like but one I do was New York flowers and that's the one that made me smile apparently it's a really award-winning perfume and I can see why it is a gorgeous gorgeous floral it's not like fruity sweet it's a real floral but so pretty it reminded me a lot of something like Burberry London something like Dior Pure Poison along those lines but it was truly gorgeous like I was like okay this is beautiful and the lady there at the counter that was when I went I actually started in, in Saks Fifth Avenue and I moved to Neiman Marcus the lady there um, she was so, so, so helpful and so sweet. And we talked about perfumes and we had so much fun and like, I was just having the time of my life. And, um, yeah, that one really made me smile. But the top favorite from the day was at the Byredo counter in Saks. And I was like going along, taking the caps off, sniffing along. And there was one up on the shelf higher than the others. And it was Animalique. And I didn't know what to expect, but when I smelled that, the smile that came on my face, I was like, wow, this is beautiful. There's nothing animalic about it that I could detect. Um, I did not spray that one on my skin, but it, to me, it had the most gorgeous sandalwood I've ever smelled. And two or three times I said, wow, the sandalwood here in here is so pretty. And the sales associate was like, well, no, there's no sandalwood. And she would list the notes off by heart. She knew them all, brilliant. And um, so I would kind of forget and I would be smelling it and be like, oh, the sandalwood in here is just so creamy and beautiful. She's like, well, there's actually no sandalwood. Like she didn't, you know, shame me or anything. She was just like, she was so sweet about it. <laughs> she was like, no, there's no sandalwood. And she'd list the notes off again. I can't remember what they are now for the life of me, but it reminded me of something and I'd love to have a decant and have time to realize what it reminds me of. It reminds me of something so particular. It was gorgeous. It was like a beautiful, creamy, cozy, gorgeous, sweet, a little bit sweet, a little bit powdery sandalwood to me. Now I realize now there's no sandalwood in it. But that's what I'm getting out of it. It would be like my perfect sandalwood. No dill pickle vibes no sharpness just oh it was heavenly heavenly by Rado and Amalik was the winner of the day there is so much more I could talk about when it comes to my day shopping for niche brand perfumes like when I saw the Amouage counter of course I went straight to guidance I have a sample and I do love that one and to smell it out of the beautiful pink bottle I was like oh my god it's like and then I saw lineage I hear people say that that's like the underrated one I smell that I didn't like it at all it was fun just exploring and finding out, okay, like I don't like this, I do like this. At Neiman's I saw the Initio counter, Clive Christian, I got to smell blonde amber. Wasn't impressed. I mean, it's not fair to judge it off of a day of perfumes filling my nose <laughs> and being overwhelmed by it and not having a chance to spray it on your skin and not doing a wear test. I'm just saying I wasn't impressed as in it just smelled sort of like a woody, a woody scent. To me like it was like oh okay and uh, I got to smell uh, oh my word there, there was so many I got to smell um, and, it, and I had so much fun so in my rose video I'm in my rose era video that I posted a few weeks ago um, I mentioned about how I'm really drawn to the brand Aaron so when I saw the Aaron counter I was like huh? and it was like a little lowly counter just kind of off to the side nobody was at it nobody was around it no one was no one was behind the desk it was just sitting there no one cared about it and it's like oh i got to smell tuberose du jour tuberose de nuit which i preferred the nuit by far uh, i got to smell the ambrette one which was one of the ones i chose to spray on my skin unfortunately i couldn't smell that one more than half an hour after i sprayed it and all the other ones were really strong the girl on mask one was really strong I'm acting like I can still smell it now, two weeks later. <laughs> um, what else did I spray on my skin? Um, oh, I asked the girl to spray Chinatown by bond number nine on, on my hand, on this hand. And she sprayed it so far away and so lightly that it just kind of landed on these three fingers very lightly. I couldn't tell a thing about it. But then I realized that I have the sample at home. This is awesome news. So now I can actually smell it 
Bond Number no. 9 was one of the brands that day that really caught my attention and that I was like, okay, there's something. I mean, I do own a Bond Number no. 9. I own New York Nights. Um, but uh, I got to smell Nolita. I got to smell Greenwich Village and Nomad. And I was just like, I was in heaven. Oh, I have those ones. And these were all in, in Neiman's. The girl, the lady there was so sweet. So sweet. Like this is New York Flowers. One of the ones that made me smile. And I mean, this is two weeks later. So I mean, obviously it's not going to be much scent left on them at this point. Can't smell Nomad. Oh, Greenwich Village. I can smell that. It's fresh. It's fresh. It's pretty. Um, so I wasn't able to form really clear thoughts on all these. I don't have a review for any of them. I'm just kind of recounting my experience to you and just sharing like the fun and the excitement of perfume, perfume shopping. I didn't purchase anything, but I had so much fun and I even got to go into a Lush store. I didn't like anything I smelled in Lush. They all smelled like, like very herbal, very essential oils, very, I didn't like any of them. I did like American cream a little bit. Rose jam was okay. Lord of Miss Rule was okay, but all the other ones I smelled, I did not like at all. Um, I did get to go into a Zara when we came back up through Florida and we went to Orlando. I did get to go to a Zara and that was a huge disappointment. I mean, there was barely anything out. Most of the things were broken. There was oil spilled all over everything. There was barely anything there. I'm like, this really is the entire perfume section. These two little tiny shelves and there's barely anything on them. So I was disappointed because there's so many that I want to smell from Zara, but I think that the best way to sample those is to buy samples online probably for that brand. But anyways, I should get to the Bond Number no. 9 sniffing, shouldn't I? That's kind of the point of the video, but I really have been wanting to talk about my experience shopping for perfumes. And uh, I tried to film it yesterday and I feel, I talked for an hour, just like I'm doing now. <laughs> and my camera had shut off four minutes in. It didn't get any of it. It was like, nothing. I talked for an hour into the air. It wasn't recording. I should check right now. Make sure. Oh, geez. Okay. Good. It's still recording. Um, so was there anything else I wanted to say about my shopping day? I just felt like in general, like everything was run like a well-oiled machine. The sales associates were spending a certain amount of time with you and they're like kind of passing you on to another sales associate and so on. And they just kind of, everything just kind of flowed smoothly and it just felt like someone rolled out the red carpet for me and this experience was catered to me and they left me alone at times when I was just sniffing some perfumes and it was really nice. Now I did get to smell um, honey tobacco or tobacco honey, I forget which it is, and I didn't like that. I know that the tobacco would come out more on your skin probably, but all I was getting was that animalic honey. And I did get to smell Rose Cherie and my friend Abby, you guys know her from, from Abby with Love. Um, she's always talking about Rose Cherie and I've never been able to find a sample online ever. So I was super happy to have a chance to smell that. And I really don't remember a lot about it, except it was rosy and girly and pretty and sweet. And I liked it. I just can't remember anything about it. And that's the way it went with a lot of the perfumes that day. I was just like, okay, it was just so much information, information overload at once, you know, and shout out to the guy at the Tom Ford counter in Saks. He complimented me on my tattoo which was so sweet. I felt so flattered. He was like, I really appreciate like the shading and the gradation of your tattoo. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, that, I it, like, it really flattered me. I was really feeling like so honored that he would say that he was, had so many tattoos and he, they were gorgeous on him. I think his name was Ramon. Anyway, I loved him. He was really sweet. And he sprayed vanilla sex on a tester strip for me. And I'd already smelled it. But I was like, well, it won't hurt to smell it again. It won't hurt to smell anything again. That's what I'm here for. And, you know, it's not one of my favorites. I don't really like it. It's a little too almond extracty for me. But, um, you know, it was okay. So here we go. Let's get to the bond number nine samples, okay? Let's start with the first one I picked up, which was Chelsea Flowers. Okay, so into Saks, I remember asking to smell Chelsea Flowers, and they did sp spray it on a strip for me. And... Oh my gosh, how am I going to get this open? Oh yeah. And for the life of me, I cannot remember anything about what it smelled like. Now, these samples I've had for a while, so I have notes on them. What were my original notes on Chelsea Flowers? Okay, I'm going to read this off my iPad. Um, sweet, powdery, floral, 
but warm and full bodied, keeps getting sharper and then goes a bit air freshener and it ends just as a faded floral. Okay, so there we go, Chelsea flowers. And I'm gonna spray it on the small end of the strip so that it will dry faster because this is just gonna be kind of a quick sniff thing. And I'm gonna, dusty, very musty dusty. Very musty musky, probably a floral. Now I don't have the notes in front of me. Should I, you guys? No, I'm not going to. I'm just gonna give you my first impressions. I don't think this is the type of floral that would be up my alley. A little bit of a musky, musty floral. I will smell it later after it dries down. I'll go back a little bit more. Do you guys like this like ASMR? Roll it back up. Okay, so now let's do scent of peace for her. Guys, I have, okay, I remember really liking this one. Let me see what my notes were. Basically an orange fluffy musk like JLo Miami Glow or Initio Musk Therapy. The vibe of clean skin or radiant nectar, just okay. So, see. Oh, it's really pretty. Yeah, it's a pretty like creamy, fluffy, citrusy musk. Good kind of musk, not like the Chelsea Flowers dusty musk. <laughs> mm, no, that one's not really for me. Yeah, I really like this one. This kind of reminds you of Mont Blanc Signature. Mm. Yeah, I really like that. I don't know who couldn't like the scent of peace. That is really pretty. And you know, I'm all about peace. I love feeling at peace. That's my thing. Don't know if that's gonna be annoying. I might have to cut that all out. <laughs> all right, now what have I got? Let's do, okay. So I'm almost out of my sample of B9. I have sprayed this one the most often. I really enjoyed this. There is something, okay, look how much is left. Barely any is left. Can you see that? Can you see how much is left in my sample of B9? I always remember Giselle talking about this and she absolutely loved it. And that's why I got the sample in the first place. Um, B9, okay, this is cool. That's what I wrote. Okay, this is cool. Sexy, sweet, spicy, warm amber. Goes more citrusy, sharp, orange blossom. It's lovely, but it leans a bit. Love, don't be shy. Okay, so I think this one is the least linear. Like I think it just, oh my God, that came out in the stream. Mm, yeah, this is cool. This is sexy. This is warm and ambery. Mm. I do get the orange blossom in it, but it's a warm, sweet, like it's a sweeter, darker, richer, amberier orange blossom. Oh yeah, I remember really like this one. If I remember, it does something a little bit weird on my skin after a while. Yeah, I really like B9. I feel like it's often on sale on um, fragrancebuy.ca and I, I don't know. I feel like I would buy it, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Okay, I can't wait anymore. I wanna try Chinatown. So you guys know, you hear Veronica talking about this a lot and like, I just wanna share in her joy and her love of this perfume. I hope I like it. <laughs> Chinatown, get it written on my strip here. Okay, let's go. Ooh. Oh, that's pretty. It's definitely floral. I wonder what's in here. I'm getting some sort of a vanilla though. Mm, it's a pretty sweet floral with vanilla. <sighs> but if I get anything, I've got perfumes all over me, but I wanna spray it on my skin and I'll come back to it and revisit in a minute. As you know, perfume can be so different on your skin than on paper. Oh, it's fresh. Okay, I'm gonna revisit Chinatown in a minute. Let's wrap it up. 
I like keeping them in these little candy wrappers. <laughs> it? Oh gosh, I think I remember really liking Queens. Let me read my notes on Queens. Oh, first of all, let me go back and read my notes on Chinatown. A slightly sweet, ambery floral with notes of soap and powder. Not the same, but vibes like Hugo Boss Deep Red. Oh, really? Not yet. Maybe further into the dry down. I'm getting quite a bit of citrus right now, I feel. Okay, I'm gonna go back to that. I wanna go to Queens. And I wanna go to Queens. Opens very interesting. Black licorice and gingerbread, question mark? Okay, I'm not gonna read any further. Let me just see what I get from Queens. Ooh. Oh my God, what is that? Oh my God. I mean, oh my gosh. Sorry, I don't want to offend anybody. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. What did I write? What else did I write? Goes from good girl, Carolina Herrera, good girl, to flower bomb, to the intense Campino candy vibe. You know Campino Candies, a lot of times I will describe perfumes using that reference, Campino Candies, because they have that like creamy sweetness, creamy fruity sweetness. At the end, it leans a little like Dior Attic slash Armani Code, very nice. I love this. This is so interesting and different and cool, sexy and sweet, warm. This would be really like alluring, addictive. Queens. Ooh wee. I like it. <laughs> I like that. I like it even more than I, like I really wrote glowingly about it in my notes, but I like it even better than I did then. Nolita, I'm gonna give it a spray. I'm very familiar with Nolita. Everyone wanted to spray that for me. They are like, oh, you have to smell Nolita because it's a crowd pleaser. It's an apple shampoo shampooy scent and I'm still gonna just spray it and smell it just. Oh yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty, it's really pretty. It is an apple shampoo shampooy scent. That's about all there is to it, but who wouldn't love that? It's very lovable. Mm, I won't spend too much time on that because I think most people probably are pretty familiar with Nolita. Okay, so let's roll her up. Okay, let's move on to, what have I got here? What's this? Wait a minute. Oh, I think I have some dabber samples of Bond Number Nines because I have one written here, So New York. And I don't have the sample here, so it must be a dabber sample that I have in my little tackle box. You saw in my 1,000 plus perfume sample organizing video. Um, that one I wrote, cocoa powder and coffee grounds, but hazy, soon got soapy. Over time, cocoa powder faded away and just left baby powder very light. That was so New York, but I don't have the sample here right now. Aster Place opens with a bit of plastic type of aquatic. The cologne, not cologne, but cologne. So blue, so aquatic, it's almost toothpaste and it stays that way. Uh-oh, do I even want to smell this? Aster Place. Oh, it's actually not that bad. Definitely minty. <laughs> minty blue, fresh. I think if this worked on your skin chemistry, this could be a really nice fresh one for summer. But I'm not gonna spend too much time on that one. So what I have left here is Central Park West and Central Park South. So we're gonna start with Central Park West. And I'll never forget when I first sprayed this one. I'll never forget it. It was like someone had poured peach juice all over my face. Like it was the peach juice that comes, not real peach juice, not juice squeezed from a peach, but the plastic jugs of peach juice. So let's see if I still got that. Central Park West, here we go. Not so much. I'm getting a lot more florals in with it this time. 
I can see how I could have thought it smells like that peach juice in the plastic jugs. But I'm not getting that really this time. Not, not predominantly. I'm getting more of a greenness and a floral. What else have I written about it? Peach juice with strong florals with green stems and patchouli and citronella. Fades steadily over time and later it's wintergreen like pink peppermints. I, could, I can understand that too. It hasn't even dried down yet, but it's fresh. It's a little bit sweet. It's a little bit peachy. It's floral. It's interesting. I think it would be worth a uh, full wear test. So Central Park West, that was. <laughs> if I have to cut all those out, oh my God. Central Park South. Now, I don't see that I have written any notes on this one. I don't think I wrote notes on Central Park South. I don't see it at least. Oh, Fire Island. So Fire Island must be another dabber that I have up on number nine. And that was ivory soap, just ivory soap. After four hours, it changed a tiny bit. The second time I tested it, it was Irish Spring Soap. Just intense green soap, even Coast Soap. You guys remember Coast Soap? or an unscented lotion, and then it goes back to ivory soap, rose soap, 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 soap. And that's Fire Island in a nutshell, <laughs> in a soap dish. <laughs> okay, Central Park South. I don't have notes on this, so I don't know what I'm getting myself into here. What is that? Let me see. It's definitely like a clean floral, a little bit, a little tiny bit sweet, but woody. Like a very nice white floral, Central Park South. That's really pretty. Is this one of the ones that Veronica talks about too? I feel like maybe it is. That's really nice. That's a really nice white floral. Like not indolic, not heady, just pleasant green, fresh, clean, white floral. That's really pretty, I like that one. It's really elegant, like I feel like it goes with my white blouse. <laughs> okay guys, well, that was me just having fun, testing my Bond Number no. 9 samples, and like I said, there are a few dabbers that are upstairs, I'm not gonna go get them now. <clears throat> Plus I don't have any skin left on which to place the perfumes right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Perfume Talk. You guys know that I'm not a professional or a perfume expert, but I'm just someone who loves perfumes and talking about them with you guys. And I have my own way of interpreting perfumes. And if you relate to that at all, I'd love for you to hit subscribe. It's just a way for you to bookmark my channel so you can find me again if you want to. It's totally free. And it's soon gonna be my one year anniversary on April 20th um, of posting videos on YouTube. And I'd love to hit a thousand subscribers, 1K. It would be so cool to see that. I'm really glad that you guys joined me today. Thanks so much for chatting with me and spending this time with me. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.